Adam, wake up. We gotta be in the airport in an hour. We're going to Japan today. I just had the weirdest dream about that. I'm Adam Mite. I'm also known as the Catman in West Oakland. I got that title because I take pictures of feral cats here in my neighborhood, and a couple years ago started making a calendar called Hood Cats. After the first Hood Cats calendar, I got contacted by a bunch of different people who were all curious as to what I did for the cats other than just take their pictures. So I reached out to my friend Ann Dunn, who runs an organization called Cat Town, and she's helped me start taking care of the cats. I have one cat junkie who lives in my backyard, but he can't come inside because my roommate's allergic. And we've gotten several litters of hoodkins adopted, as well as a bunch of the adults spayed and neutered. Now Anna and I are teaming up to open America's first cat cafe here in Oakland, California. Now I'm about to head off to Japan to go see cat cafes firsthand, see how they function, and get inspired. After about 16 hours of traveling by plane and by train, the Catman finally arrived in Japan. We met up with my friend Adrian, who was letting us crash at her place, and set off to explore. First stop, Ueno Park. We arrived in Japan just in time for Hanami, the cherry blossom season. There were tons of people out enjoying the day and shopping in the market. We even bumped into the Catman of Ueno Park, who was taking his cats out for a stroll. Next up was the Akibara District, which was described to us as Japan's nerd or otaku capital. We were bombarded by video arcades and electronic stores, but my favorite part of Akibara was all the capsule vending machines. Most sold little toys or cell phone accessories, and of course I found some with cats. After the overwhelming sights and sounds of Akibara, we wandered into a temple to take a breath. So, the Catman is officially in Tokyo, so that's weird. <laughs> uh, and we're about to go into our first cat cafe, and so I'm super excited. We headed to Cafe Jalala, which was pretty easy to spot from the street. As we entered, we were greeted by the cafe staff and handed a book, introducing us to each of the cafe's cats. The space was fairly small and had a limit to 10 people at a time as to not overwhelm the cats. I made my way to the cafe counter, ordered some treats, and made friends right away. Some of the cats were pretty pushy, or only interested in you if you had treats, but I tried my best to distribute them evenly and made sure not to wake any of the sleeping cats. After hanging with the cats for about a half hour, our treat box was empty and we made our way to the exit. So we went to our first cat cafe and it was pretty awesome. There was like 17 cats in a really small space, uh, but for the most part they seemed happy. They were really excited when we bought little fish treats. Now we're in Asakusa and we're gonna go to two more cat cafes. Our next cafe, Asakusa Nakoen, sat six stories above the city and felt more like an office building than a cafe. In fact, they didn't even serve coffee. The cats here were much more playful though, and most were rescued by the owner Takako, who also does a lot of outreach for rescue groups in Tokyo. I was particularly drawn to Tetsu, who looked pretty sad with his big blue cone on, so I made sure to give him some extra special attention. I gave Takako some hood cat stickers in a calendar, and told her about Cat Town's plans for America's first cat cafe. And he lives in the backyard. Is yes. this you? That's the yes man. <laughs> You are going to open the first cat cafe in, in the yeah. US, hopefully. <laughs> Why don't you tell me? There was a bit of a language gap between us, but luckily our awesome guide Lorna showed up just in time to help me translate. We talked for a while and bonded over how our friends and family think we're crazy for dedicating our lives to cats. As we wrapped up at the cafe, Tetsu was relieved to be freed from his big blue cone. And we were excited to explore Tokyo with our new guide. We took a brief break from cats and Lorna introduced us to takoyaki, or what we would call octopus balls. Crispy wheat flour filled with octopus, pickled ginger, and green onions. We made our way to Cafe Kala and talked with Lorna about what brought us to Japan. I just explained as like the universe put cats into my life and I'm just running with it. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, I've been a lot of like really nice people. Yeah. We're in Japan. <laughs> with, for cats. Yeah, for cats. <laughs> 
We said goodbye to Lorna and headed home to prepare for our trek to Cat Island. Three cat cafes, one day. We set off for Fukuoka, about a six hour train ride south of Tokyo. There, we planned to visit more cat cafes and our first feral cat island. We made it on the train. Hopefully, our tickets are correct. And we don't get kicked off in the middle of nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we will soon make a bed. It's a Monday, it's a Monday night. How'd that thing with the train tickets go? So it didn't go so well. We were on the right train, but we have the wrong ticket. So now we're waiting for the 952 train and Hopefully it's the right one. Train number two. We'll see how this goes. And this is the Nozomi Super Express, bound for Hakata. We're on the right train. <laughs> Once we arrived in Fukuoka, we wasted no time in finding our next cat cafe. We just took a six hour train ride to Fukuoka for cat cafe number four. But it's closed. But there's cats. I can see them. <laughs> I was pretty bummed that the loft was closed, but luckily their sister cafe was only a short walk away. At Cafe Keurig, cats were everywhere. On the counters, in the kitchen, and even in the bathrooms. All of the cats were very friendly and had no problem jumping up on the table where your food was, waiting patiently for you to not pay attention so they could share your snack. We wrapped up our day's journey and headed to our host Samira's house. We made it to Fukuoka and this is the house we stayed. Samira has been hosting guests from around the world for years and her hospitality showed. It really was the perfect place for us as she had all kinds of animals cat, a Shiba Inu dog, and even a pet chicken. But possibly the wildest of all was her son Hikaru. He was a whirlwind of energy and a lot of fun. Sumire, Hikaru, and her Norwegian guest Ruben thought the cat island would be a fun way to spend the day. So off we went. <laughs> so we're at the ferry station to go to cat island. And there's a cat here already. out, taking a hyper six-year-old on a feral cat photo safari makes for quite a challenge. It's hard to know what to say when you want to be grateful for what you have, but it goes away and I don't know why. Clouds filling up the sky, but maybe tomorrow there will be sun. Push 
Pushing clouds like ships through the open blue You can sing to me and I'll sing to you No matter what happens to us Stew with his marmalade fur We'll still purr on Wherever love we can find No matter what happens to us No matter what happens to us definitely worth the trek. And lucky for me, the boat ride back to the mainland was so much nicer. I was even able to enjoy some lunch and a calm moment with Hikaru. Sumeri had some other fun sights to show us and really blew our minds by taking us to the Nanzuin Temple. The temple is home to the world's largest bronze statue, and what has to be one of the world's largest cat statues. We made various offerings for good fortune on our cat-centric journey while we wandered through this peaceful place. We wrapped up an incredible day full of cats, and most importantly, even managed to tire Hikaru out. <laughs> we got back to Tokyo and were invited to a picnic under the cherry blossoms in Nakamaguro. We had just gotten acquainted with our new friends when the weather decided to turn on us in our picnic. So, we did what everyone does in Tokyo when it rains. Karaoke! After a couple hours of singing our hearts out and maybe a little too much sake, we said goodbye to our friends and prepare for our journey to Ashinomaki, home of Cat Island number two. What happened here? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. We went and did karaoke. At some point, I fell down, bumped my chin. My elbow still hurts, my shins, my ribs. I don't know what's going on inside of me. <laughs> That's junky. I miss my cat. So we just took a five and a half hour train ride from Tokyo to Ishinomaki where we are right now. And tomorrow morning we're gonna take a ferry out to Tashirojima for Cat Island number two. Japanese toilets are amazing. The seat is heated. That's awesome. And then to wash your hands or get water, you flush the toilet. And then the sink fills up the, the bowl. That's incredible. Oh, there we go. So we're getting into week two of our trip to Japan. It's been so amazing. We met so many like awesome people, cat cafe owners, just random strangers who see, we see them with their cat t-shirts and give them stickers and they get super stoked. Uh, and we're like, like halfway around the world to, to see cats. <laughs> uh, when I say it out loud, it makes me sound crazy. <laughs> but it's been really fun. 
Definitely feeling exhausted. Gonna hit the bed early tonight. There's uh, there's like noodles in this pillow. Like, <laughs> or, or I don't know what's in this pillow. But pillows aren't supposed to make that sound. <laughs> uh, yeah, and go to Tashirojima, Cat Island number two, tomorrow morning. It looks good. <laughs> it looks good. Whatever, it'll work. As we waited for the boat to Tashirojima, I left a few Hoodcat stickers behind for future catcationers. Chucky's in Japan. Shirojima, and we're about to go find some cats. Tashirojima is an island with a small fishing community. It's also becoming a destination for cat lovers from all over the world. It's home to a small elderly population of humans and hundreds of cats. With no spay neuter program to speak of, the cat population seems a little out of control. We saw at least two dozen pregnant cats and I can't imagine what the population will look like as time goes on. Tashirojima is also known as Manga Island. It features a series of cat-shaped lodges and campgrounds that are available for parts of the year. They weren't open during our visit, so I guess that means I'm just gonna have to come back. We're here on Tashirojima, and it seems like there's like about maybe four or five to one cats to people that we've seen that weren't other tourists here to take pictures of cats. We're not the only ones. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of crazy cat people all over the world <laughs> that are willing to make a journey to here. Yeah, retiring here is Catman's dream. So we're at Tokyo Cat Guardian. This one is probably most similar to what we're trying to do with the Cat Time Cafe, in the sense that it's a really small cafe and a big rescue center focused on adoption. Tokyo Cat Guardian operates as a nonprofit no kill rescue for homeless cats, which is similar to our mission with the Cat Town Cafe. It was inspiring to see them take on the task of finding homes for so many cats. Our next cafe, Tamara Nucci, was on the complete opposite end of the cat cafe spectrum. Walking into this place was like being transported into another world. A world filled with cats. Beautiful cats. From bangles and exotic shorthairs to munchkin and Norwegian forest cats. The cats here were a mix of super playful and incredibly dormant. There were even a few munchkin cats, the Datsuns of the cat world, which fit in nicely with the aesthetic of this cafe. This cafe provided such a magical experience. If we could strike a balance between Tokyo Cat Guardian and Tamara Nochi back home, we'd have something very special for America's first cat cafe. We were at a maid cafe. Right. Ladies wore cat ears, uh, talked to us about cats. <laughs> I guess that's everybody's talk to us about cats. Before leaving Tokyo, I needed one last souvenir. Just, just Neko. Neko Motokan. I want it there, mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. I used the Emoticat as my online signature, and thought it would be the best way to commemorate my travels and cement my loyalty to cats. Oh yeah, that hurt. Oh, that was an ear. You're invested. Yeah. Meow, meow. At first, I thought I kept finding cats because I came here looking for them. But throughout the trip, it became obvious that Japan is just as crazy about cats as I am. We 
saw a lot of cats, a couple of dogs, and met so many amazing people. Japan provided so much inspiration, and this trip was just what I needed to bring America's first cat cafe into reality back home. I went to Japan, all I got was this lousy scar, these two cat tattoos, and like a, a ton of awesome memories. <laughs>